Hi, I'm Tim Gray. We're at the Variety Newsroom with Joel Cox and Gary Roach, who are the editors of American Sniper. Terrific film, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Give us a little time frame on American Sniper. The production started on my birthday, April 2nd. As Clinton always does, he shoots it very fast. The schedules are short. Kevin really thought that this film needed to come out this year. And he basically said to Clint, whatever it takes to get this out, we're backing it. And what did it take? A lot of work. <laughs> in a short time. In a short amount of time. We were uh, finishing up Jersey Boys, and we literally finished that. And then the next week, we started shooting this film and moved on to it. So we were involved in the casting of it because Clint has done this for some time now. We cut the auditions together and <laughs> make the scene right there. And you can see if it's really working, if there's any chemistry uh, for the people that are going to be in those particular parts. This film, the only thing he said to us, he says, this is going to be, a, you know, we're going to be bouncing all over locations. And I truly feel this film will be made in the editing room. And wow, that's, that's not something he normally says. I got a woman and a kid 200 yards out moving towards the convoy. Her arms aren't swinging. She's carrying something. You got eyes on this? Can you confirm? Negative. Your call. Well, now, he has the reputation of not doing a lot of takes. Does that make your job easier or harder? Well, it's, it's a little bit of both, but I understand his style of directing. Years ago, when he gave me the full reins to be his editor, when Ferris Webster retired, he said, I got one piece of advice. First instinct, don't second guess yourself. That's how I direct. He says, I just want to keep the actors fresh and I don't want to burn them down. He says, I'm an actor first. And I understand when I get with another director and they start doing take after take and it's like, well, what was wrong with that take? He doesn't want to rehearse. He almost wants to shoot the rehearsal because he might find this little nugget, a glimmer in the eye that that actor will never bring again because he didn't realize he did it because it's the first time he's saying those lines. Sometimes they're a little uneasy, not sure, but he loves that because it's so real. And that's what he's looking for, realness in it. And then our job is to try and find those nuggets and put them in the film. I'm ready. I'm ready to come home. The film was very um, energetic, I mean, very high adrenaline. What was the first cut? How much longer was that? About two hours and 45 minutes. It was a lot of work to get it where it is. I mean, we lost a few scenes. We were able to take a little bit of the war out. It was fun going back and forth. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so good, as far as I'm concerned. Joel and I were able to see the movie with Taya, Kyle, um, Chris's wife, a couple weeks ago. She really, truly felt that Bradley Cooper became Chris. Kyle. She was just stunned by that. So I think that that's really exciting when a real person that was so close to the story and it's so present and she was touched dearly and that what that made the movie special. You did your part. We sacrificed enough. You let somebody else go. Let somebody else go? Yeah. Yeah, well, I couldn't live with myself. Yeah, well, you find a way. Okay, I need you to be human again. 